Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek Artist back again with another video and this time I'm going to show you how you can make any of your artwork look dramatic, cinematic, cool, awesome, whatever, you name it. And to demonstrate that I'm going to use a few examples. For instance, here's a before and here's an after with the dramatic makeover. So to find out how you too can easily do it in just a couple of minutes, make sure to watch the video till the end. And hit the like button, share the video with your friends and leave a comment if you find this video useful. Because all this engagement is going to help the YouTube algorithm understand if the video is useful and accordingly help it reach more people through video suggestions. Which will in turn help me out a lot and motivate me to keep making these videos for you all. And also don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications because I'll keep bringing you guys more of these awesome videos on digital art. Alright, so let's start from the basics. Here's an image of a door that I downloaded from the amazing free stock photo website on Splash.com. Now you may ask, why a door? And I'll say, well, because it's so simple and basic. And a great way to ease into the process before I show you something more complex, such as the example I showed at the start of the video. Now I believe it's time to add some drama to this image, help it tell a story. So here's the step-by-step -step process to give it that dramatic makeover. First thing, I'll create a new levels adjustment layer and then tweak the values to make the image look much darker. Then with the default soft round brush, I'll increase the size using keyboard shortcuts close square bracket. I'll pick black color from the palette and on the adjustment layer mask, I'll paint that diagonally and it'll act more like an eraser, removing the darkness from the area I'm painting black on and showing the bright base layer underneath the adjustment layer. If you know how layer masks work, then this is a great non-destructive and flexible way to erase or bring back something without making a permanent change. And all it takes is painting back and forth with black and white on the mask. Now besides the thick diagonal light ray that I just created, I'm also gonna include a thinner ray to go along with it. Now I'm gonna pick white and paint on the areas of the door that'll be in shadow such as the edges or the left side of the door knob. Similarly I'll use this to get rid of the light from the areas where the cast shadow of the lamps will fall. Now we have some strong hard cast shadow to add to the realism. To take it a step further I'll use the smudge tool to smudge the edges of the shadow slightly near the tip where the shadow ends. Let's set the doorknobs cast shadow too and parts of the door's frame that I missed. Cool. Now I'll take a color balance adjustment layer and shift the sliders towards blue. Now just like before I'll pick black and I'll paint on the lit up areas to erase this new bluish tone from the light. The purpose of this is to make the areas in shadow appear more cool. Now I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay blending mode, then with light yellow color and low opacity brush, I'll gently paint it along the light rays to make them appear much more warmer than the cool shadows and also stronger with a radiant glow. I'll erase some of that from the dark cast shadows. We're mostly done. Now I feel I can add some strong highlight on the lamps. So in hard light mode, I'll pick some really bright colors and paint the strong highlights on the right side of the lamps and the mailbox. Finally, with a soft brown brush, I'll paint some glow around them. Very subtle. So here's the difference after adding the dramatic light. But that was one way of doing it. Let's try another lighting setup. You'll follow the exact initial steps, but this time instead of partially lighting the wall alone, we will light a part of the street as well along with a part of the wall. This sort of setup is called half lighting. I'll erase the light from deeper areas to show the cast shadows. Now comes another challenge, what to do with the bicycle. I'll simply paint on the mask with white on the left side of the bicycle, tracing along its edges everywhere until I get a nice dark cast shadow falling on the wall. There. Time to add some warmth on the light with overlay mode. Let's try something different this time. The subsurface scattering effect. I'm gonna paint some pinkish tone in overlay mode where the light transitions to shadow and bring some nice variation to the colors on the wall and on the street. Now with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus U, I'll tweak the hue saturation slider 
to see if we can find a more subtle variation of this. I like that. These small attention to details can make a large impact. So here's before and after the two lighting setups. Let's try a third setup. This time instead of making the scene darker using levels adjustment layer, I'll make it brighter, almost bleached. Then I'll fill the mask with black to remove it all together and then paint it back where I need the light with white color. This time I'll light the street only. And to make things interesting, I'll use the lasso tool at 10 pixel feather to make some small patches like selections on the wall, door and parts of the street in shadow. And paint some white there to simulate light peeping through leaves of a tree. And then using multiply blending mode, I'll paint some cool dark gradient at the top to pull attention away from there. Then use a series of overlay mode layers to add some warm light and glow near the street. Some color variation along the light shadow transition area. And finally, in hard light mode, I'll paint some very bright whitish yellow to show the radiant light bouncing back up from the street. So here's how we went from this to three different dramatic lighting setup in just a few easy steps. Now before I move to the final complex art, let me show you a few more examples of before and after this dramatic hard lighting effect. Do you see any difference? Well if you do, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now it's time for the final boss. Remember that thing I was painting at the start of the video? It's time to give it a dramatic makeover. Oh, just in case you're curious about how long it took me to make this because I get a lot of comments asking me about the time I take for a piece. This took me around 18 minutes. It could have taken much longer but it didn't because I didn't focus on too many unnecessary details. Just basic shapes, forms and values. Here's a valuable lesson for you that'll go a long way. Speaking from experience, when I was a beginner, I used to obsess over details. The more details, the better. But it took me all these years to finally understand that beauty lies in simplicity. Now I care more about simplifying everything and adding minimum details. It's something that will come with experience and practice. Now coming back to our main subject. So you know the drill by now. Just like before, I'll create a levels adjustment layer, tweak the values to make it much darker. Then pick black color and this time with a hard round brush because we have a lot of complex shapes and sharp edges. I'll paint on the mask to erase the darkness from the places that will receive some direct sunlight. It's a great opportunity to create interesting shapes with light and shadow to construct a dynamic scene. I want to keep the foreground in shadow. and add some small breaks in the long patch of light on the ground. Now with the smudge tool, I'll make the edges of the shadow blurry as they move further away from the source. Now I'll create a new color balance adjustment layer and just like the door scene before, I'll push the sliders towards blue to create cool bluish shadows. And then with black color, I'll paint on the mask in the light areas to get rid of the cool bluish tone from those overexposed areas. I'm trying to achieve a good balance of warm and cool tones here. Now I'll take a new layer in overlay mode and with a bright yellow color I'll softly paint some warmth in the lit up areas. Time to create some haze and depth. So I'll take a new layer in hard light mode and paint some bluish haze at the top for the sky and some bright warm tones in the midground to create some atmospheric perspective and haze, some green tones near the foliage. And now for some subsurface scattering and color variation along the transition of light and shadow, I'll paint some cool reddish tones on a new layer in overlay mode and you can clearly see the difference that it makes. And finally, since it's a dominantly warm scene, I'll take a color balance adjustment layer at the top and push the colors a bit towards yellow and red. And make a final levels adjustment to make the blacks look a little less dark. 
and it's done. I'll put it all inside a group and compare it with how it looked before. I'll make some final post processing to add some chromatic aberration and noise and we are all set. I hope you found this video useful and got to learn something new and if you did, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications of future videos because I'll keep making more of these cool videos for you all. So that's all for now, see you on the next one, peace.